And uh, first up, we'll go ahead and actually spectate coach. Um, and best of luck to our uh, two competitors here. Coach leading out with the mage. Joe leading out with the mage. How about that? The Frostbolt getting rid of the Mana Worm. You definitely don't want those Mana Worms to uh, sneak up on you there. Suddenly a 1-3 can become a 5-3 really quickly, and then there's two of them, and then suddenly you've, uh, you've lost the game. <laughs> So Coach going to play conservative. He's going to go ahead with the uh, Arcane Intellect to get some more draw. Joe's going to put up a secret and just go ahead and smack face with the Arcanologist. Do a little bit of early damage here. So far, I've been really impressed with uh, Joe's composure. Able to come back from round one and take out Dom. Uh, a great opponent Dom is and, and move on and uh, face off against one of the best here in Coach. I really got to stop calling him Coach. I'm pretty sure he prefers to go by John or just call him Revolution. But Revolution is so much to say on stream. Joe putting up another secret. Um, we can probably assume that that's going to be the Ice Barrier. Um, so far we haven't seen enough from Joe to see if he's running the Secret of the Burn, but we can always assume Burn due to its popularity as we get closer to the end of the Ungoro metagame. All right, so those in the chat who are being active, please uh, do let me know if the um, names in the uh, upper corner did go ahead and update. I would uh, greatly appreciate that. Excuse me, you are on fire. Okay, so matching a valet for a valet. Uh, Coach is going to get rid of Joe's valet there. And unbeknownst to Miami Joe, Revolution actually has a pretty stacked hand here. Definitely geared towards the late game. Uh, we can't see what's in Miami Joe's hand. He's going to go ahead and replenish his hand with the Arcane Intellect. Has six cards in hand and another but he's valet. These valet are just taking each other out. Talk about Hearthstone cannibalism there. No way, don't you dare do it, Revolution. And he's going to do it. Another Medivh's Valet, KOing a Medivh's Valet, <laughs> just slinging three damage all over the place. Man, welcome to the Mage Mirror match, folks. Miami Joe going to go ahead with the Primordial Glyph. Definitely wants to think about this carefully, considering what he's playing against. Uh, but looking at Revolution's hand, it, it's just so great. You've got the Fireball, the Polymorph for the removal, Alex Straza, Medivh, and Pyroblast combo. Uh, that's such a great hand for late game. Uh, we don't know what's in Joe's hand. Uh, Miami Joe could very well have the exact same cards, but um, we just don't know. Joe going for the Frostbolt, reducing its cost down to one with the uh, Glyph, discovering some bullshit and uh, getting rid of the Medivh's Valet, ending the Valet on Valet violence. Hashtag all Valets matter. And out comes Medivh, the Warlock himself, um, summoning onto the field. Yes, I I'm very well aware Medivh is technically a mage, but we like to joke with Josh, so for that fact, he's a Warlock. Uh, onto the field comes Medivh, equipping the staff ATS, and Joe's going to go ahead with the Acidic Swampoos! He actually put that in as a tech, probably against mage specifically, and he's going to go ahead and fireball and ping the Medivh. Coach is back to ground zero. No staff of ATH, no Medivh on the field. Well played by Joe to save the ooze specifically for that play. Not to say that Coach doesn't have other options. He has the Alex Drazi. He has the Firelands Portal. Two Firelands Portal at that. Um, but that hurts. 
losing a staff of AT ish like that really hurts. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to summon a 10 cost minion with the Pyroblast. You're not going to get the double effects off from the uh, Firelands Portal. He's going to go ahead and Firelands Portal face though after a Volcanic Potion, clearing Joe's board. Wow! And he pulls he pulls the Doom Guard, but he didn't attack with it. Oh no, a misplay by Revolution. He didn't attack with the Doom Guard. Uh, perhaps that's part of a strategy of some sorts. Maybe he really wants to do the Alexstrasza play. Maybe just a misclick on his end. I'm thinking it's probably just a misclick. Assuming his turn was over, he actually drew the Doom Guard. Joe's going to go ahead with the Volcanic Potion and the Firelands Portal of his own. Okay. And Joe's actually going to pull out the Verdant Long Neck. For those who don't know what it is, a 5-4 beast that adapts when it's summoned. So a 5-4 body onto the field. Um, not exactly sure, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that Denver is still uh, in the in the chat, probably watching the stream right now. I'm surprised he's not helping Sean, like he uh, helped Sean in our freshman year Pokemon tournament. Hashtag still salty. So uh, another Firelands Portal and a pass from Revolution, <laughs> bringing out one of everybody's favorite basic cards, the Nightblade, deal three damage to the enemy hero, a four four body on the field for Revolution. And it begins, folks. Here we go. So Miami Joe going to Alex Straza. Now, Coach has an answer for that. It's going to be the Polymorph. He is going to go ahead and Polymorph the Alex Straza, um, probably saving it specifically for that. And Revolution has the card advantage. He, with the cycle of the Archaeologist, if he chooses to play it, he will remain at six cards in hand, uh, while Miami Joe only has four. We don't know what those four cards are. It seems like Joe has just been kind of saving cards throughout the game. Um... And Joe's going to go, oh, right, for the Pyroblast. I don't know about this play. You know that mages run Alexstrasza. Revolution can just simply Alexstrasza his own face, which he's exactly going to do now. And Miami Joe's already burned a Pyroblast. Revolution back up to 15 health, bringing Miami Joe down to 12. And in the hand is the Pyroblast. So right now, even on board, is the lethal for Revolution. Does Joe have an answer for this board? He does have an board, respectively, with the Meteor. Dealing up three damage on. Okay, and he's going to go ahead and ping, get the KO, and drop a Mana Worm. Unfortunately, you know, this is an easy play for Revolution. You crash the minion against face, and then you Pyroblast to proc the Ice Block. And it looks like the Revolution has two Ice Blocks left in hand. I don't know if Joe's going to find a way out of this, unless he's got a, maybe an Eater of Secrets and... A couple other s spells to do some damage. Checking in the chat right now. Looks like we've got 10 viewers, so 9, not including myself. But thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. Dalton and I are really trying to grow this, and everybody else who's a huge part of TG. I want to thank all of our players for coming out to support us. Um, even those who picked the game up last second to come out and support, I really appreciate it. Uh, so Joe making an interesting play here. He goes for the Eater of Secrets. I um, think that may have been a little bit too too premature. You want to save the Eater of Secrets from when you have lethal. So Revolution is going to throw up his second of three Ice Blocks. Um, and Joe's already burned out that Eater of Secrets. He does have two Secrets of his own. So if I'm Revolution here, wow, so three of the best Mage spells... What is he going to pick? And he's going to go for the Pyroblast. 8 cost, deal 10 damage. Probably too good to pass up. Fireball to the face is going to proc the Ice Block. No, it's just going to kill Joe! No extra Ice Block. Probably hiding behind an Ice Barrier and maybe a Mirror Entity of sorts. That can't be true because he dropped the Arcanologist. Maybe a va Vaporize. Regardless, it was not an Ice Block, which he needed. And Revolution's going to take Game 1 of Round number 2. Um disappointing considering that joe had such a great play with the acidic swamp ooze and then getting rid of the medivh on board uh, but coach doing what mages do best reserving their resources and um being able to finish in the late game so we'll see what joe chooses to counter this mage if i had to guess i would probably say uh, going with his warrior assuming that it's going to be the 
Taunt Warrior, gaining up that armor. Great matchup against Mage. And we're in, and Miami Joe actually decides to go for the Hunter with... Wow, what is this? On the hunt, turn one. Maybe he thinks he can rush down the mage before the mage can get to the late game. I don't know. Joe going to drop the hyena right away. Again, another questionable call if Coach has the Frostbolt in hand, or even trading with the Mana Worm and pinging gets rid of the hyena. I think Miami Joe may be a little tilted after that first match. Maybe looking to come out a little bit too fast. Yeah, and there's the Frostbolt. There's the trade with the Mana Worm. So a 2-2 Mana Worm on board. Miami Joe, nothing on the board. Not something you want to see from Hunter. Dropping the Ash back, going for the Hero Power. Revolution got a ping. The Fiery Bat will go on to the Mana Worm. A coin coming out from Revolution to the Primordial Glyph. Ugh, a 4-1 Mana Worm. That's terrifying. That's Revolution coming out with some of uh, the emotes. And Miami Joe has to just hero power and pass. He has no way of really dealing with the Mana Worm unless he wants to burn a kill command. Oh, it's not looking good for Miami Joe. He needs to create a board and needs to do it fast. Revolution has been able to not only get rid of Joe's minions, but also maintain a full hand and not use too many resources. It's exactly how Mage plays it. And again, I'm just I'm really surprised with Miami Joe's choice to go with Hunter. I really expected to see the Warrior come out. Uh, I don't like Hunter's matchup against Mage. I think Mage has enough to get rid of them. And Miami Joe again, forced to hero power and pass. And, and this match is, is quickly getting out of control, folks. We've, we're going to see Revolution continue powering up the Mana Worm, cycling through his deck. Um, Frostbolt coming out onto the hero. Six damage, two damage. Suddenly, Miami Joe's down to only ten health. Um, that's probably going to be it. The kill command finally coming out onto the Mana Worm. Joe will probably just use the other kill command on the Arcanologist. Revolution dropping his second Mana Worm, throwing up a secret, powering up the Mana Worm further. And he'll go ahead and ping face for the one damage. Oh, Blizzard coming out. We're discovered from the Primordial Glyph. Getting rid of just about all of Joe's board. Uh, Revolution going to go ahead and crash into face with the Mana Worm. Bringing Miami Joe down to 5 health. Um, just grasping at straws at this point. And just about any spell can go ahead and KO Joe from right here. Flame strike, and that's gonna be game. Miami Joe falling. Pretty one-sided match. It was a pretty one-sided match with Revolution, kind of just taking that right from the start. Um, it was an interesting match right away with the on the hunt. Then Miami Joe was kind of stalled. He wasn't able to snowball damage after that. Um, Revolution was just able to plow through the rest of his field. Um, and now that puts Joe in a really tough position. He's still going to deal with this Mage. And much like we saw in Game 1 on stream, Mage has dominated the first two games, and it's up to one final deck to try to take it back. If any deck can do it, though, it's most definitely the Taunt Warrior, which has a great matchup against Mage. Joe needs to slow down. He needs to shake off the last two losses, and he needs to know that he's got a great matchup going in. He mulligans. It looks like it's a good mulligan for Joe. Play it smart, play to your strengths, and you know get this match back under control. If I'm coach, I'm thinking, okay, exactly as we saw on stream, tempo from turn one, you put the pedal to the metal, you get this taunt warrior down before it can drop really big taunts, 
and I don't want to drag this on to a game four. I want to end it right here, clean sweep, and, and move on to round number two, three. Checking in on the comments. Haven't seen too many comments uh, around. How, how are everybody's matches going? Viewers who are watching, how is the stream looking? Are you guys enjoying uh, our first ever Trinitarian Gaming Hearthstone tournament? Uh, hosted by myself, John Crow, representing Trinitarian Gaming. So we're going to go ahead and drop the Stonehill Defender. Such a good card. It's great in Paladin, discovering those really great taunts, but also in Taunt Warrior. You're able to pick whatever minion fills your curve out. It lets you complete the quest quicker based on your matchup, based on where you are in the game. Such a great card. Uh, but Coach is going to be able to take care of that pretty easily with the Frostbolt ping and three damage to face with that Mana Worm. Uh, if I'm Miami Joe, I really want to get rid of this Mana Worm as quickly as possible. I don't want to be taking consistent damage over and over. I want to be able to get rid of it, get to the late game where I know I can outlast this mage with the amount of armor I have and with my eight damage a turn from Die Insect. Uh, Miami Joe going with the double armor, um, the armor smith play. Uh, whenever a friendly minion takes damage, gain one armor. It's a great card in a Taunt Warrior. And now Coach needs to really think about how he wants to handle this, um, crashing it with the Mana Worm. Okay, so Coach is going to drop the Eater's Secrets, gets the body on the field. You know it's a dead card in this matchup, and Coach is clearly confident that whatever cards he has in hand is enough to continue leading him through this match. So he's okay with ditching that. Oh, a zero-cost Frostbolt from the Discover Primordial Glyph. It is going to go ahead and give Joe two armor, but Coach not concerned. Revolution is just going to hit face with that Mana Worm. The Alley Armorsmith coming out, a great card in this deck. Um... Joe going to go ahead and crash one of his Armorsmiths into the Eater of Secrets, bringing it down to three health, gaining two armor in the process. Uh, Coach is going to... Oh, Revolution is going to target it down with a Meteor. That's going to get rid of not only the Armorsmith, but also the Alley Smith itself. A lot of armor gained, but I don't think Revolution minds. He wipes the board and brings Joe back down to two armor. It's not over yet, though. Joe has been able to play two taunt minions. He's at, effectively, 24 health. Um, he's got a couple really good taunts on the field. Let's see what he's able to do. The Whirlwind into the Ravishing Goal, into the Execute. An interesting play, uh, but really I didn't see any other option for Joe to get rid of that Mana Worm. He hasn't seen a Fiery War Axe. Man, you really, really want to see the Fiery War Axe to get rid of those Mana Worms. Turn one, you only take the one damage. Um. So Revolution going to go ahead and Firelands Portal, the Ravaging Ghoul, and he'll get the Harrison Jones. Um, great card against the Warrior. Unfortunately, no Battle Cry and no weapon. I mean, it's just a 5-4 body. Joe's going to answer with the Alley Armorsmith. Drop that down. Armor up. And uh, we'll see if Coach is able to deal with another Alley Armorsmith. He handled it pretty effectively the first time. We haven't seen Fireball at all. He's going to go ahead and drop a secret. Excuse me. And do the Medivh's Valet, which will be enough to KO it after the Harrison Jones. Which will give Joe effectively two more armor. And checking in on Joe's quest here, he still has four minions with Taunt left to play. Um, he's going to go ahead and drop the Drake. That's a great play for Joe. You get rid of the Harrison Jones, you get a 4-8 Taunt minion on the board, and uh, not that Coach is running low on cards, but seeing Mage with four cards is a lot less terrifying than seeing them with ten. Uh, Joe is doing, doing a pretty good job of keeping this game under control. Um, 
effectively 27 health to 30 health. And he needs, uh, I believe, three more minions, which he has two in hand. Uh, let's see if Joe can kind of make this a little bit of a comeback and swing it into a game four. Excuse me, you are on fire. Revolution going to drop the valet, ping the uh, Drake, setting up for essentially what's going to be a KO next turn. Here it is, the Fiery War Axe. That's so good for Joe right now, getting rid of these valets. Um, really what he needed to see was to get rid of the Mana Worm quickly. Um, but he's going to go ahead and take care of the full health Speak to me. valet. Drop the Tark Creeper. And procs the Ice Barrier. So, smart call by Coach. Putting up the Ice Barrier. Um, now he's at 34 health. You can Ice Block just about any time you want. Um, he does have a full board of minions to deal with, but nothing that Mage can't handle. And I believe we're going to see a Flame Strike coming out here. Most definitely. Yep, the ping into Flame Strike wipes Joe's board. Joe gets the draw into the... Ooh, the Ordinary Direhorn. Not what Joe wanted to see. He does need to play two more minions. He can play one right now. And if I'm Joe, I'm probably going with the play up the ND, the plus three health. He'll armor up, and he's just going to go ahead and hit face. Actually, he's just going to pass. Interesting. Tim, I feel like I gypped you with the bloodlusts. Tim, I was going to Deathwing next turn. Sad days. Sad days indeed. Uh, love to see how that game's going if you guys want to keep me updated in the group chat. Harrison Jones comes out, gets rid of the Fiery War Axe, letting Revolution draw one card. When one card turns into three cards, as Arcane Intellect also comes out from Revolution. Um, ugh, asleep with the Fishes is not what Joe's going to want to see, but he is going to be able to complete the quest with the other Direhorn right now. Fire Plume's Heart, and a little bit of a curious play. I wonder why Coach decided to Harrison Jones now when he knows that Joe is so close to completing the quest. He could have destroyed Sulfurus and uh, potentially gotten rid of four damage instead of the three. Dire Hearn will go out. Sulfurus gets equipped. And Joe's is going to go right for it. He's not going to bother armoring up. He's going to go straight for the die insect after crashing with the Harrison Jones. Eight damage right to face. Two, five attack taunts. One with Divine Shield on deck. Um, if anybody could deal with it, though, it's going to be Revolution, who has a good amount of cards in his hand. 26 health left. Draws into a secret. Probably his ice block. Now put up a secret there. Kneel before the dragons. <laughs> no. Okay. Frostbolt going on to face. Oh, followed by a fireball created by Primordial Glyph. Now, if I didn't know any better, I would say 10 out of 10. He has ice. Oh, he has the Pyroblast in hand. Um, this is probably evidenced by the fact that he went in with those spells so quickly, bringing Joe down to 11 health. And Joe's going to try to thread this needle. Eight health left. On Revolution. Revolution gonna throw up another secret. He's showing a card. It's gonna be the Polymorph. Okay. So maybe not Power Blast this turn if he has it in hand. I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking he definitely has it. I'm bringing him down to 8 health, and I. I don't, know, I don't see a way Joe can get out of this. He has no other way to gain armor or to gain health. He really needed to see an ice barrier or an, um, a shield barrier if he had one there. Die Insect procs the ice block. I suspect Pyroblast next turn. That's going to be, looks like a solid case of GG's. And there it is, the Pyroblast to face. Um, a pretty commanding victory there by Coach. Sweeping Joe in, in three games. Um, hats off to both players. It's GG's all around. Um,
and then that's essentially what, what it comes down to. We got a really seasoned player up against somebody who's relatively new to the game, somebody who uh, doesn't necessarily have all the cards, and uh, we saw there exactly uh, how great that revolution is at the game. So revolution is the first.